evening, everybody. Good evening to all parts of the world, all parts of the Europe. Welcome to Novi's final conference, promoting EU sports values and fighting violence in sports. Uh, the Novi's project that will be presented and the conference today will promote EU sports values and we will try to give you the short and very important issues about fighting violence in sports. Although we planned uh, this conference a long time ago due to pandemic situation with the COVID-19, we are now forced to do it online, but it's not going to reduce the efforts that we are planning to reach at the end of this conference. Uh, starting today, I would like to say hello and to greet all the audience today that are listening to us, especially students from the universities, teachers, uh, all the school teachers, club and sports managers, coaches, clubs, players, sports association, cultural association, etc. I hope we find you well. And to start this conference, I would like to give word to Mr. Fabio Croci, who is the project manager and uh, the one that is very much involved in the Novis project on all levels. Mr. Fabio, I give you the word, please, welcome. Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you very much for this introduction. It is an honor for me to introduce all of you to the Novice Project and the main activities of the Novice Project, where we are coming from, uh, what has been done so far. But of course, as you have understood, a lot of speakers will go uh, through details with bad practices, with methodological aspects. My duty is only to present you in a glance, at a glance, uh, the main aspects of the project. First of all, we have been funded by the European Commission under the Erasmus Plus project uh, um, framework, in particular, a novice sport. It is a, is a sport collaborative, collaborative project. Uh, novice means no violence in sport. You will find all the details on the official website. I'm going to share right now on uh, your screen in order to follow my presentation. You will find uh, the official link under novisport.eu. This is the official website. You will find all the details also of this particular uh, event today on the website. This is our, uh, let's, uh, let's say, the, the final event. This should have been in uh, presence. Uh, we were uh, supposed to manage all of everything in Breda and in the Netherlands in March. Then, unfortunately, due to the coronavirus uh, situation and the lockdown, we had to move everything online. Otherwise, we would have been uh, inviting all of you in presence to share our experiences and uh, to strengthen our friendship. But anyway, even online, we will try to get in touch. Please remember to ask anything in the chat box and to provide any feedback. In the meantime, uh, let me show you. Uh, of course, I've said that this is the uh, an official Erasmus Plus project. Uh, we are uh, uh, several partners from several countries. Uh, just uh, let me mention that uh, you will find in this specific link partners, our main uh, partnership, uh, which is composed by several Italian uh, partners like CGFS, I'm representing it today, but in particular also Comunita Nuova, which is uh, uh, the partner who started this incredible adventure thanks to an Italian local project named EOT for Positivo. But we are also supported by the Olympic Committee, uh, the Italian Olympic Committee, and the region, but also other partners, very important partners, relevant partners from other countries like CBG from Spain, like Asteri from Greece, the Stefan Noikov uh, Foundation from Bulgaria, the National Institutes for Sport from Romania, the CRSMP from Poland, and of course, 
EFDN, who is hosting this uh, very incredible meeting today from the Netherlands, those are the main partners of the consortium who have supported since 2017 a three years long project. But what is Novice about? Well, uh, first of all, you will find a lot of resources in this uh, uh, website. And in particular, uh, you will find uh, several news which uh, represent the history of the project. And you will notice that there is also a resource center. While well, in the resource center, I invite all of you to take a look there. You will find some interesting stuff just to have a representation of what has been the project, Novice project. In particular, you will, you will find something like brochures. You will find the sport chart. Let's take a look to those main uh, two documents in which you will find, well, uh, as I have said, a, a general sport chart has been approved since the beginning of the project with the, uh, let's say, the, the main values that we are supporting. This is a project aimed to avoid the violence in sport thanks to uh, training and to uh, the pedagogical activity in the schools, in the sport clubs, in order to um, uh, allow Youth, young people to be aware of the risks of the potential no, uh, violence which is uh, around the sport, not in the sport, but around, you know, uh, supporting uh, parents, uh, uh, coaching, a lot of behaviors that can bring a lot of issues in the sport uh, sector. So we thought that we have to begin since uh, uh, starting from the uh, young people, starting from the schools, from the very early stage, we adopted this sport chart and you will find that also again in the main website, you will find find a lot of stuff that can be used in the training activities. But as you will see in the following presentation, uh, we have a methodological approach. All this stuff you can find in the website is useless. If you don't use with a specific objective, with a specific methodolog methodology that we have done, we have tested and we have uh, improved during these three years. 3,500 young people has been involved in seven countries in testing activities. So we have done a very comprehensive uh, set of tools and in particular, a methodological guide. How can you get all this stuff? Well, it is quite simple. You go on the affiliation page. Uh, affiliation page is very important for us. It is a demonstration to the European Commission that there is engagement for this project and other peoples outside the partnership is interested in using all our tools. So first of all, I invite all of you to take a look to our, our website. And if you are interested to access to more stuff without any cost for you, it is a free access upon only registration. Please go on the pilot affiliation webpage, subscribe your organization for free, and you will access to several resources. First of all, all the contents of the resource centers and the online educational platform resource center, which is learn.novisport.eu. This is, uh, requires um, a password. We will give you the password as soon as you register and you will have the full access to the methodological aspect, which are divided in two sections, the train the trainers activity and the educational activities for final recipients. So all the stuffs like video, like uh, audio visual material, PDF, logbooks, games, and whatever. Please remember that we have already translated all this stuff that you are looking at in English in several languages. The ones that you were looking in the um, partner uh, section of the website. So we have already provided translation in Italian, in uh, Bulgarian, Romanian, and all this partner have uh, carried on the translation of the methodological part in uh, their own language. So as you can see, we have done several uh, things. We have done several um, tools during this project. Now it is time to spread the word, to test it in every country and to provide feedback. Of course, we are here to provide you assistance, which will provide you support. You will listen to other keynote speakers which are going to present their own activities in their own countries. A lot of interesting things have been done. A lot of stakeholders, public administration, Olympic committees at national level have been engaged, uh, federations in any kind of sport, not only uh, in soccer, but also in other sports have been engaged with several stunning results. 
So I'm going to stop my presentation in a few seconds because I want to ensure that all the other speakers will have enough time to present the specificities. But anyway, we are here to, uh, to answer to your questions. So please interact with the chat box and I give the microphone back uh, to Alexander. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Fabio. And uh, this is a, a really huge pro project and the outcome of the project, uh, they're really amazing. And everyone who really wants to get in, it has to do just uh, to, to contact the website that you have pointed out. And I, I'm quite sure that this will be valuable for a lot of clubs and a lot of stakeholders, Olympic committees, as you said, and everybody else, association, etc. Uh, thank you one more time, Fabio. We will we'll be coming back to the, to the project and your website, and I'm sure there will be some questions. And now we are continuing for the we are continuing with the second uh, keynote speaker for today. I'm giving the word uh, for the Magdalena Kamenidis, who is a physical education teacher from also the member of the National Institute for Sport Research in Rom Romania. Magdalena, you're welcome. Oh, thank you, Alexander. Thank you all. And this for this opportunity, I I am great, very grateful. Uh, for Romanian, uh, I will present the best practice um, uh, in our school uh, in all the school which uh, was involved in, the, in this project, awesome project. I will start um, directly with our uh, four approaches. Uh, first one, uh, the ultra phenomenon in sport. Uh, I will tell you some words about each of them. Second approach, uh, it's about uh, two types of violence, objective and subjective violence. Uh, third approach is about, um, here in Romania, we have a law. Um, there is uh, uh, for, uh, sorry, there is um, for our committee uh, action against violence in sport. And uh, fourth approach, uh, uh, it's about children and the adults game as a fundamental methodological orientation. Uh, first uh, approach, uh, as you know, uh, ultras phenomenon, uh, the ultras word uh, means uh, in Latin uh, beyond the borders, uh, emphasizing that fans want to encourage their favorite teams beyond the limits, in many cases uh, taken to the extreme. The difference between uh, ultras and hooligans, according uh, with many, many special experts, uh, is that unlike uh, hooligans who seek uh, to provoke violence against the rivals, and the ultras seek to support their favorite teams beyond the fair conventional supporter. Uh, that's why people are aware of the presence and the match of the phenomenon of violence in sport. Uh, uh, we are uh, Latin people, Romanian, <laughs> and that's why um, events such as uh, viable uh, violence between fans and players, supporters and club leaders, fan and police, may, uh, physical damage inside and outside sports arenas, refusal to comply with the rules imposed by the organizer and law enforcement companies. They began to be a part of sporting events consulting. For this reason, although the frequency of these events is recognized, both club president and athletes do not appreciate that uh, there uh, has been a um, significant increase in the phenomenon of violence in recent years, especially in football, but uh, uh, now we'll see in many, many other sports. Uh, about the second uh, type of, uh, the second approach, uh, I would like to tell you a few words about uh, what means uh, violence, objective, uh, objective violence and subjective violence. Objective violence, uh, which is a criminal measure uh, and the one in which state institutions should be empowered to intervene. And uh, the second uh, type of uh, violence, <clears throat> um, it's uh, a more subtle form of violence, that of attitude, contact, humiliation, offense, insult, betrayed, which <clears throat> we generally call antisocial behavior. Therefore, uh, the phenomenon of violence at uh, sporting events extend on the large scale from physical violence to the lack of attitude of civilization. Um, we have um, some measure 
to prevent, cover a wide area, for example, uh, social and educational campaign, improving relations between clubs and supporters, promoting dialogue with rival clubs, controlling spectator uh, through uh, surveillance cameras, uh, inter uh, police intervention, uh, infrastructure investment, strengthening the social role <clears throat> of clubs, um, organize uh, ticket sales on a consist basing, improving legislation. The third um, approach is <clears throat> faster. I will uh, tell you about our law. Uh, and I think that uh, in each country, uh, there is uh, some, some law against violence. Uh, the measure of this law uh, aim at uh, strengthening of authority of law enforcement officer, prompt punishment of offenders compliant with the provision of uh, European Union law, increasing the awareness, increasing the awareness of the courts for the rapid solution of records of uh, violent in sport instrumented by the police effective and rapid implementation of court ordering measures, certification and period uh, testing of all staff involved in the safety of spectators, players, and uh, stadium officials, development of the national program for the prevention of violence during uh, sports events in collaboration with uh, uh, sport federation, professional leagues, uh, the ministry of our uh, uh, national education or the ministry of our youth and sport uh, uh, ministry. And um, at least but no less, the na national, we have a national campaigns to prevent violence in sport, especially for children and young people. The last uh, approach um, that I started told you it's about the, the game. The game, uh, uh, each of us uh, um, as an adult, and uh, we have an inside out, <laughs> each of us, we have an little children. Uh, that's why the game is a, a, a very important, uh, play an, an important role. Um, and as a methodological strategy, however, remains an uh, uh, important tool as uh, it develops cognitive, emotional, social, and relation skills, enabling the child to think before acting, to test his abilities, to look for alternative solutions, to improve perceptual skills and intellectual performance, to progress to new forms of uh, movement and behavior, and to ultimately to promote uh, the enrichment of self-perception, research, and the gradual and progressive construction of one's own identity. Improving the game is still today um, a fundamental methodological orientation, a transversal tool. See that this project, uh, Navis, uh, primary and source of the child's experience. The game positively promotes the structuring of the child's personality and can be used as a real education means. Through groups game, children gradually learn to assert them, themselves, to adapt to reality, to assimilate reality, not against others, but with others to direct aggression so as to turn into a capacity for collaboration, understanding, respect, and to love, to love the, the other children, uh, to, to, to start playing uh, according with the moral and the value of sports means fair play. Next uh, slide, uh, as you know, we have um, uh, school games. We have had already school games, uh, 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 which involved uh, many, many uh, students, over 300 students, uh, volunteers, uh, teachers, PE teachers, coaches, and parents as well. Um, I uh, put a link here, but uh, I think that uh, you uh, can see already on our uh, Novis Romanian Facebook page, on YouTube, uh, and uh, on Novis uh, website project. 
uh, data collection uh, during these uh, two years of um, many activities, uh, we share uh, many survives of children, PE teachers, coaches, volunteers, and uh, as you see now, um, uh, we have uh, a number of the eight activities carried out, a um, number of 2014 children involved, 110 teachers and coaches involved. Uh, many of them uh, was trained, uh, were trained uh, during uh, novice uh, trained uh, trainers, 75 schools and clubs, clubs involved, and uh, uh, 272 volunteers, uh, as I said, uh, parents, friends, teachers, and coaches. Uh, number of sports um, were uh, 16, rugby, tag, catch ball, snowboard, dodgeball, as you see, football, um, acrobatic gym, tennis, karate, uh, martial arts, bicycles, rolling skates, banner design as well. And the uh, institution uh, were having been involved in the project activities, uh, a number of 18 as a uh, Ministry of Education, uh, National Education, Bucharest School, Inspector for Sport, uh, International Marie School of Bucharest, many, many, many uh, schools and, and clubs. Uh, the overall purpose of the project, you know, was to prevent the incident of violence. As I told you uh, in the beginning of my presentation, racism and any form of intolerance in sport, particularly in youth sports sector at amateur level. The specific objectives of the project were educating young people to a true sport culture and teaching the real values of sport and uh, promoting active participating participation on sport uh, stakeholders, sports club in combating violence in sport. The project core activities were the novice school games, as I told you, for Papilis Romania as a pilot project. The approach was mainly based on sport practical activities as a uh, catch ball, basketball, running, um, uh, football, football games. Uh, sport comes, uh, we uh, told the uh, novice school games uh, have target young people uh, aged uh, between 10 and uh, 18 years old, especially with fewer opportunities and uh, um, of course, uh, children, students with uh, disabilities. The Novice Project had an innovative approach in our country by improving the direct and active participation of sports club and um, sports federation for combating violence in sport. The Novice had also a direct impact on sports stakeholders to have increased the awareness and visibility of their in initiative for combating episode of violence in sport and develop new partnership and sport network across Romania. Concluding uh, what uh, I told you, this was the sum up of our activities it was uh, awesome. Every activities uh, in each part of our Romanian country. Uh, with the direct implication of our awesome Romanian team as PE teachers, coaches, volunteers, to whom we are thankful and I'm grateful. And last but not least, we have spread these objectives uh, over the Romanian border in the Republic, Republic of Moldova, where beautiful things happen there. And uh, we have received amazing response of from children and PE teachers uh, uh, involved as well. That means from our point of view that we exceeded in, uh, achieved the project goals. And uh, final slide, but I, uh, I, I uh, try to, uh, uh, to stop my uh, <laughs> crying. <laughs> Uh, I hope uh, to see you in the next future uh, project and uh, many, many thankful and uh, gratitude for this team, novice European, novice European, novice Romanian team. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Magdalena. Thank you for these uh, emotions and uh, uh, the beautiful feedbacks that you got at the end of the 
project and uh, it's nice that uh, uh, it's not going to stay only in those countries. The project already goes more than this. Uh, thank yeah. you for uh, connecting all these objectives about educating young people, promoting active participation, and uh, also all the research you have done as a pilot research in um, novice uh, uh, school games in Romania. Thank you thank one you. more time. Thank you one more time. And now we're going for our next speaker. Uh, I have uh, the honor to present uh, Ivana Markov Cikic uh, with the subject, how media and motivational process could help to prevent violence, violence in sport. Ivana is professor at the College of Sport and Health in Belgrade with uh, a lot of experience in doing especially this kind of topics. Ivana, you are welcome. Please start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Professor Ivanovsky. I'd like uh, to greet uh, all participants today. For the start, uh, please uh, hear the words of Professor Kokovic, the leading Serbian expert in violence in uh, sport. He says uh, that we live in a time of violence. Most societies in Europe and worldwide promoting nonviolence at the same time, and uh, in the same time create conditions in which violence become attractive to a large number of people. Our civilization is becoming uh, uh, violent. Uh, mostly, the law of profit uh, creates such conditions in today's uh, society, but uh, there is a long list of uh, uh, reasons. What matters is what we can uh, do. Uh, how do we prevent violence in sport? First, by improving the law in this area and consist implementation of the law. Here in Serbia, we have a problem with the second part of sentences, uh, consist implementation of the law. But before that, however, first of all, we need the following. Uh, continuous education of all stakeholders in sport, coaches, players, audience, scouts, administrative workers in sport and uh, sport uh, media. At the bottom of the list are the media, but no less important uh, because the media have a great uh, power in society uh, uh, today. And we, uh, it's important to know uh, who is guilty. Are negative events in sport an inspiration of the media? Or the media inspires people to negative behavior in sport? Also, we would like to know, has sensationalist reporting intensified violence in sport uh, or uh, no? And uh, today we have situations here in Serbia, but uh, in general also, that people who feel a lack of identity often join extreme groups of sports fans. They attract attention of the media by violent behavior. Uh, and for them, the victory uh, is less important. The more important are incidents at matches uh, because incidents and matches are mostly shared on social networks. Negative sports content is very accessible to young people here. Adolescents spend about 33 hours a week online, according to UNICEF. And this is a lot of space for negative uh, role uh, models. Uh, that's why important media literacy in sport and also in different parts of uh, society, modern society today. Uh, it is clear that the media will not be our partners in preventing the, uh, the incident in sports and the media um, respect uh, uh, only uh, profit. Uh, uh, here, um, uh, our case study shows how the media promote negative uh, role models in uh, sport. You can find uh, all research on this official website, the College and Sport and Health in uh, Belgrade. We perform a media analysis of an event with fatal consequences in sports, the murder of the leader of the fans of one of two uh, most famous clubs in Serbia, Alex Alexander Stankovic, the leader of the fans of Partizan Football Club, uh, was killed on October 13, 2016 at 9 uh, p.m. 
quantitative, quantitative analysis uh, shows in eight days, uh, the murder was a media topic uh, 1600 uh, times. Different uh, kind of media, not only internet, uh, print media, electronic uh, media, uh, angels in news and different kind uh, uh, of media. Uh, a lot of uh, important people made uh, a statement on these uh, uh, occasions. Uh, 28 uh, influential people gave a statement of the media about the murder of a sports uh, uh, fan, uh, uh, today's pre current president, former prime minister, uh, minister uh, Vucic, uh, different minister, film directors, a lot of football and uh, basketball legend, uh, scientific advisor for European uh, studies, the mayor of, of Belgrade, uh, sociologist, journalists and uh, different uh, kind, uh, kind of uh, people. Uh, uh, it's really important uh, what message was sent in those eight days through the media, that the fan leader is a very important person. On the one hand, the media write about the fan leader as a drug and arms dealer and participant in many delinquent uh, actions. On the other hand, he's a powerful enough to avoid court. He's someone who attends the meetings of the club's uh, uh, management. Uh, on the end, uh, he made important uh, decision uh, in sport. And what is conclusion? Uh, that violence in sport cannot be easily stopped. Is, it is difficult to prevent uh, 1600 announcement about the murder of the leader sports fan and sports media are looking for profit and profit is looking for sensationalism. But what uh, can we do? On the one hand, we must work on media literacy of all stakeholders in sport. We must educate it, all stakeholders in sport not to accept bad role models from the media. On the other hand, we need to use the media to creating positive role model in sports, fans uh, who celebrate sports, players who play fair, non-violent communication in sport between coaches and uh, uh, referees. Also, all of us who are in sports in some way, uh, we have to repeat and use the media to point out that victory is important, but sport cannot be reduced to warfare the sports arenas. Novice Projects has made a great contribution in the field of multimedia and didactic tools offering logbooks, games and videos that prevent violence in, uh, in sport. I hope uh, that uh, with this uh, presentation and with the case study, I have very much pointed out the danger of bad role models, danger from sensationalist media, and the danger of preoccupating the whole society with these role models in the wrong way. We need to use uh, the power of the media to promote good role models in sport. This is exactly what the Novice Project is doing. Our task is to continue on the same path to spread uh, non-violence in sport in all parts of Europe and uh, beyond. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Ivana. Uh, this was a really good uh, experience. Thank you for sharing with us this kind of experience. I must say that uh, uh, with the Novice Project, uh, in the methodological guide, especially with the violence in sport and uh, through uh, media, has been uh, discussed. And uh, big gratitude to Professor Francesca Vitali, that she will speak later on, and uh, Professor Salvatore Conte, uh, that they gave the contribution for this methodological guide in, in this, in this uh, special aspect. And uh, now uh, we will continue with. Um, one uh, a short uh, video presentation. I give the microphone to uh, Simone. Simone, please, can we see the video? Okay, Alec, I'm going to share my video.
Okay, sorry, the music. Give me one second. Keep going, Alec. I'll be back uh, in a minute. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Simone. Uh, now, uh, after uh, Professor Ivana Markovčikic from uh, Belgrade, we are moving uh, to Spain. Our next uh, keynote speaker is. Uh, Ricardo Ventura with the theme best practice from novice project in a sport club working with the parents. Mr. Ricardo, your microphone, please. Hello. Is hearing from me? Yeah, fine. Okay, thank you. Are you looking the presentation? Yes. Okay. Let's go to start. Hi, how are you? I hope you and your families are okay. Okay, I will begin this presentation with two easy questions for all of us. You have only answer in the chat, in the Zoom chat, okay? Uh, the first question is very easy. It's, uh, it will work for warming up. The first question. Do you think parents have an important influence in a sport? Only answer yes or no in the chat, please. Let me see. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. <laughs> so let's go to the, to the second question. A uh, second question is, how do parents contribute to violence in sports? For example, shouting at the referee, it could be an example. The answer must be a short sentence, like this example of the referee, okay? Let, let's go to write in the chat. Okay, thank you, Fabio. Excessive support. Everyone on the platform is saying yes. Even protection, it's a, a, a very good point. As fans, pitching pressure. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your answers. Uh, now, Imperative to win. Okay, now uh, I would like to, to explain a history that happened to us in one of the camps with parents. After the camp, uh, several de days later, one mother said to me that her son had written in the parents' WhatsApp group that her mother pressured him with some advice and he didn't want her mom to go to the following match. He showed her, she, she show, she show her, her a red card, as, as you can see, like in football. The mother learned the lesson and she behaved better in the next matches and her relationship with her son improved. I was showing this example in the next parents' camps that we did. In, 
I have a father in the next camp that came to me and told me, I'm like the mother of the red car. No, I'm more aware, so I behave better. So I would like uh, to begin with this history because I want to show the importance of working with parents in sport and how to collaborate with them to become less violent in sport. Okay, now I'm going to talk about steps we have taken in CBG in the, meeting, in the meetings with parents. Uh, the steps are the following. We have seven steps. The, the first one, we want to highlight why parents are so important in the novice environment. We told them that during two days, their children and coaches would be working on the situations of violence that happen in a field or track and in the dressing rooms. At this point, we explained to them that parents were responsible for their behavior with their children and also from the stands. We told them that the problems in the world of sport usually arise when each actor doesn't do what we, what we have to do. For example, when a parent wants to be a coach, it's a problem, or a coach wants to be a referee, it's another problem, it's another problem, and so, and so, and so. The second step in these meetings, it was after this explanation, we asked the following questions. What was the reason why you as a parent wanted your child to do sports? Here, we work on the, psychological, on the psychological aspect that exists between what one thinks and, and as one behaves. That is the difference between behaviors and thoughts. In the third steps, the next, the next exercise with parents was to build what a parent's behavior should be in the stance and in the relationship with their child. We will create several groups and they later explain in public and share the agreements they reach so that everyone could have the maximum information. Uh, five, three minutes ago, you put in the chat that uh, pressure kids, coaching in the place of, of the real coach, imperative to win. There is some examples that we work in our ECAMS too. The four steps, uh, the four step in the in the meeting, it was that the following was that the parents reflected on their behaviors that we are not consistent with points that have been working previously. It's not coherent. Okay, it's not consistent. Then the five uh, step, the fifth step, uh, it was that they define adjective related to behavior. After this, they work in groups and they created a list of behavior they have to adhere to. The sixth step, the sixth step, it was that then we did a job where parents propose actions to be taken to improve their behavior. And the seventh step, the, the, last, the last one, is that we did a closing dynamic where parents commitment to making the great changes that they have experienced in the session. It was a game with a ball of wool. So these were the seven step, steps we work in the parent sessions. As a conclusion, I would like to say, parents can be trained in the same way as children and your objective, all of our objective, must be no more red cars, please. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you, Ricardo. This was amazing presentation. Uh, thank you for reminding us that uh, besides the children, we should also train the parents. Uh, it's a very important role. We have to pay attention.
Uh, I think that we can now play the video. Simone, am I right, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Sorry, guys. I don't know why. Uh, that's all right. Look, uh, what I wanted to say, that video speaks uh, more than any sounds. And in this video, we can really understand the message. Uh, and we are all, if we go back, we can all witness this kind of uh, situations near the courts. And these are the things that we have to have it on our mind and to prevent them. This and more about this and more about videos you can find on the website that Fabio has explained at the beginning of today's conference. Uh, we will have some more videos later on. Now we will continue with our conference and our next, uh, our next speaker is Professor Buyar Saiti uh, that comes from North Macedonia with the subject of how can sports serve as an edu educative content for the youth? Professor Saiti is professor in uh, kinesiology from University of uh, San Siro Methodius Faculty of Pedagogy in Skopje with a quite huge experience. Professor Saiti, you have the microphone, please welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Everybody, thank you, Novis, for having me. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to show my great satisfaction about the presentations uh, I saw here. It's so compact and so related to one another. I will just add something else to what uh, Alex said. Uh, I teach didactic, didactics or methodics of physical education. Uh, at the Faculty of Pedagogy and what Ricardo said about uh, our parents and what we said about courts and before that, that we have to bring this to young children because at the schools, uh, we have this pedagogical triangle like is the child, the parent uh, and the school. Uh, everything comes together uh, up to the point of my presentation. And I know I'm certain that it will like uh, encircle everything to the last of it. I will, my topic is how sport can serve as an educative context for youth. You know, like educational in English is like educational, whether it is kind of educative. I love this and educative, the word, because educational is for preschool and then it's for uh, elementary school, but educative is something else. So let me start by a, a simple definition because many people uh, have different definitions about sport. Many people, PE, uh, call them uh, as sport. So then we refer to Oxford Dictionary that defines sport as an activity involving physical ex exertion and skill in which an individual or a team competes against another or others for entertainment. I, I see this a little bit funny because uh, it's like individual or a team, yes, competes, this is very important, competes against another and he doesn't write against himself or the team itself, but only uh, another and others. And it's like for entertainment. Well, this is like a question mark because it competes and we have the same uh, dictionary for the competition definition, which means the activity or condition 
of striving to gain or win something by defeating or establishing superiority over others. If you look at this, like sports with the definition of competition, like striving to gain or win something by defeating and establishing superiority over others and doing it for entertainment, well, then we have violence in sports. But let's take it slowly. We go a few slides uh, into sociology. You've heard of George Herbert Mead. He's a famous sociologist. You know the saying, me, myself, and I. So he gives a very nice uh, explanation of the self, me, and I. According to his theory, the self has two sides or like two phases, the me and I. It's very important to understand that me is uh, considered the socialized aspect of an individual. Uh, the me represents learned behaviors, attitudes, expectations of others, uh, of the society. This is sometimes referred as the generalized other. Uh, the me is considered as a phase of the self that is in the past, something that has evolved from the so uh, society with all its rules or whatever it is, like uh, developed by the knowledge of that society, uh, by the social interactions, uh, and uh, what all these things the individual has gained. But from the other side, from the other side, the I can be considered the present and the future phase of the self. The I represents the individual's identity, but based on the response to the me. That's why the I always says, okay, but it's fueled by the me. Society says I should behave and socially interact one way and think I should act the same. But many times it doesn't. Many times the I says, no, I will. society tells me not to do this or me tells me not to do this. That's why I do different. So that notion becomes then at the end a self. In short terms, the me and I have a didactic relationship like a system of checks and balances. The me exercises social control over oneself. The me is what prevents someone from breaking the rules or boundaries of society expectations. And the I allows the individual to still express creativity and individualism and understand when to possibly bend and stretch the rules that govern social interaction. The I and the me make up the self. Here, this is in a very good or beautiful contest. But what if I is breaking the rules in the game, in the sports, in the interaction with others? So he decides bullying or physically violating uh, somebody's space or whatever. That's why we go to this. The means of physical education are very simple, are the physical exercises, games, sport, and gymnastics. But when we talk about children and you, but more like children, everything is done through the games. Like uh, preschoolers, they learn through the games. Schoolers, they learn through the games. That means physical exercises through games, sport through games, gymnastics through games. And then you have two types of games, like creative games, which are for preschoolers from three to five years old. And they are like individual games. Uh, they are all based on child's children's fantasy. They have no rules. Sometimes you can play them in the group of two or three children, but this is like building a sand castle or something like this. So they are for preschoolers. And then we got the pedagogical games, which are divided in two types of games. They are the elementary games. And the elementary games are the basis and the beginnings of the sports games. And that's why they have rules, but elementary games, they have very simple rules and they, have, they can be changed uh, on the way that the teacher wants or the, the needs that they have. So they can be modified by the needs. And then you have the sorry sports games who have international rules and you cannot change them and uh, you can use them for different uh, uh, activities. So as slow we come back to physical education, we have to understand the concept of physical culture because we know what's culture. It's something, uh, a composition of habits, behaviors of one mentality. And physical culture is generally divided on physical culture, physical education, sports, recreation, and kinesiotherapy.
any shortcuts. Physical culture is an integral part, part of social culture in general, and it's the base of the whole process of physical education. So it's responsible to uh, meet the necessary needs of physical education, so comes with the results. From the other part, physical education is an organized process. It's an organized process that aims at the comprehensive development of men with motor skills and habits, with high so, uh, physical, moral, and mental quality. So the physical culture has moral, physical education has the moral here. Then as a third part comes sport, which is an integral part of the physical culture that requires special and systematic training, whether physical, moral, technical, and tactical, the development of which has a competitive content based on planning organization with special rules. Then is sports recreation, like an integral part of physical education and aims with various exercises and sport activities to achieve pleasure and fun. And kinesiotherapy, like is an integral part of physical culture that aims to prevent and cure uh, bodily deformities with special physical exercise. So the cradle of novice, not of the project novice, of no violence in sport, that is physical education, like PE. If we want to change the future, we have to start now with the youth. Why? If in the school, teachers and parents understand that have to indoctrinate children on the goals of physical education, which are these goals? The most beautiful ones in the world. Development and strengthen the biomotor potential. To satisfy the needs with biosocial motives, with systematic exercises and various forms to understand the value and importance of comprehensive development, sorry, with operating and protective skills, happiness, as well as personal and social satisfaction with physical activities to maintain balance with daily intellectual loads to which is attached the high standard of living and technical means that reduce physical activity. <coughs> I apologize. So these are the goals of physical education, but which are the tasks? The tasks are three. Biological. When children understand that the biological tasks are like impact on the growth and development of the organism, improving the locomotor function, formation of the straight posture, tempering the organism, formation of hygienic habits, understanding the importance of leisure and entertainment. Oh, they would say like, this is something very beautiful. This is not only a result, but what is the other task? The other task is educative. What children learn with the educative tasks, development of desire, character and discipline, positive attitude towards daily work or everyday work, disciplined behavior towards the collective and society, development of patriotic feeling, development of aesthetic feelings, development of human feelings and creating skills for fun. This is the educative tasks. And that's why the theme was how can sport be seen in educative concept towards youth. And then is the last one which comes to learning the educational task, development of coordinated movements, formation of acquisition of motor skills, development of motor qualities and equipment with theoretical knowledge. In general, if we understand this, we come to this point. I, I took the golden circle of Simon Sinek. Uh, Simon Sinek is a uh, interpreter and uh, life motivation, uh, uh, how can I say, interpreter in big corporations. And he usually says, all right, let me take Apple and Steve Jobs. Every computer firm says like, what we do, we do computers, how we do them. Well, we do them uh, with a beautiful design. We make them children friendly and uh, very high speed professor processors and high resolutions. And then what? Well, buy my computer. No. Why? He says, Apple is different from others because they don't start with what? They start with why. And if you ask many, many, many corporations, why do you do this? Why do you open a business? They would say about, I just want to earn money. No. Money is just the result. If 
you have a goal. You start with the why and then you become successful and you know how to do it and what to do. So in general, if we come back to educational process, if we come back to schools, to children and no violence, we don't say like, what do we do? Or what do we want to do with our children? We educate them. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we take them to school. The thing is, why? Why? Because they can stay human. Because the program in the schools has to keep them be human and feel human. And in order for us to continue working and spread the word of no violence uh, in sport, we have to understand and impose the why that children must be human with all what that means. And then, of course, we do that by taking them to school, taking them to school and educate them. Don't forget, thank you for all the presentations. At the end of the day, the, the didactical triangle where is the child, the parent, and the school itself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Boyer. This was very inspiring presentation. Uh, as always, you remind you reminded us on all the definitions and distinctions that we need to know. Uh, now I would like to ask uh, Simone, do we have another video, please? Or Leonardo is this time? Yeah, I'm going to ask to Leonardo to help me because I can't see the the tools on my screen. So Leonardo, please show the video. Let's let's try. Thank you. Uh, just one second. It's visible. Yeah, cl for the close the advertising. Ale! Muovi quelle gambe, ma sei incapace! Ti puoi sbagliare! Fare rispondi! Fare rispondi! Fare rispondi! Svegliati! Non so cosa farmene di una come te! Bessa a me, muciaccia! Bessa a me, mio amore! Sueño de mi vida! De mi corazón Thank you Leonardo Thank you Leonardo It was um, the video now this time with the music and explains a lot and we have some more videos for you later on and before we continue, <clears throat> I have to ask all of you that you are looking at the, your screen uh, for more than one hour. And since uh, we have planned, uh, Mr. Giulio Bencini and me, to do it in a uh, uh, face-to-face situation, now we don't have this situation. I would like to all of you to take your hands and let's stretch a little bit in front of the small screens, please. Let's stretch. We are sitting more than one hour. And since we are talking about the sport, this is a good opportunity. Stretch front and up hands, please. Up. Good. One hand over your head to the side and then to the other side. Yes, a little bit of exercising is not, is not bad. And as you can see, we can interact also this way. Thank you, guys. And now I have uh, the honor to present our next keynote speaker uh, that will speak about novice sustainability. We are inviting Tanya Kiriakidou that is coming from Greece. Tanya is president of the Asteri organization and the president of the Hellenic Federation Urban Wheels. 
Tanya, microphone is yours, please welcome. Okay, thank you, thank you. I will try to share my screen now. <laughs> okay. Uh... Unfortunately, the press is not playing, so I made it like a PDF. Okay, thank you, Earl. Um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, we've changed a little bit the way we say good morning. We say healthy morning and healthy afternoon and healthy night. Since COVID, we have to change a lot of things. And uh, I would like uh, to express my feelings and my happiness that I've worked all this time since 2018 with all of you. It was an amazing time and hopefully Novice will be sustainable because I truly believe that we did the huge and great and amazing work, all of us. And this manual has to continue. It has to go on. It's not something that we have to stop. To promote education, development, health and peace. And all these four elements, they've been uh, actually been part of our project all the time. And participating in sports is not only a way for children and young people to remain healthy, but also to learn to assume responsibility, act in a spirit of fairness and resolve conflict peacefully. And this is very clearly identified in the manual we all created. These qualities are key prerequisites for success in later life and can help young people gain a foothold in the job market. In the novice manual, we claim to offer this opportunity through the training method that we have established. We boost confidence and we help improve the prospects of the kids for the future and to avoid violence. In our aims is to articulate aspirational shared core values, something that we all, as we can ex experience, we did through our um, training uh, lessons, is to reflect a global consensus throughout the sports industry in relation to the prevention of violence in sport. Also, we provide a statement of ethical principles in relation to violence in sports that enables individual to st st stakeholders worldwide to recognize and resolve the ethical dilemmas of associated risk behaviors. And third, we assist the local jurisdictions such as uh, the national governing bodies of sports or clubs to define and range standards of conduct appropriate to their own cultural beliefs and custom in relation to risk behaviors associated with violence in sports. Uh, here, I would like to share with you that we really try to conduct a lot of uh, the federations, the sport federations in Greece. We actually had um, a very funny response from the Football Federation when they told us, uh, is there any violence in sports? And uh, I believe there's a huge laugh. Yeah, I can see your eyes staring right now. <laughs> um, and, but in the meantime, COVID was uh, on, uh, in front of us. And some of the federations started uh, concerning that there is violence and we have all to get together. So in the um, option of sustainability, or, uh, that we'll see later down in my presentation, I propose that we have very much to think how we can establish another proposal because the project is right now in the finalization and we have to find out how all these things that we have done will be disseminated and will really take part in our lives. History is constantly teaching us that the key to sustainable systems is that they are grown from within rather than from without. The nature of numerous projects necessitates various partnerships in order to grow. And one important aspect of owning a project is growing local level expertise with the support of the European funding, of course. So my proposals are, we need to try to figure out how we can get extra funding and keep Novice uh, dissemination for an extra two years. The, an online help desk on the website, something that we can, um, even the people can conduct uh, different uh, teachers, different trainer, coaches, experts. That will be amazing because this is what uh, a lot of the teachers told us that, uh, okay, the project is finished. You won't be coming again to our school. We will need to get in touch with you and receive some information. 
So unless we find out that novice is going to be engaged in the training program of the federations or the schools, we have to see how we can keep on our help desk on our website. Uh, networks and contacts for information, inquiry, encouragement, and monitoring. Even the trainers are calling back to, sit, to ask for information. They need to be encouraged. They need to be monitored. They need to have someone to tell them how they have to move on because things change. And we had that change with the COVID and we found out how things got so different. Good or, or prestigious speaker can be engaged and recorded on video. Due to COVID, we found out that a lot of things can be done easier or can be adapted from kids where it's on video. And we saw that advertisement that you created that are really helpful and amazing, that maybe we have to choose some of the games to do them on video and make uh, the life of kids and trainers easier because uh, kids watch and even olders watch easier the videos instead of the um, uh, reading. Uh, we had the um, European desk gave us some information that uh, most people do not read more than two paragraphs per day. So they can watch a video easier. And this is maybe uh, another idea for the um, uh, continuation and the sustainability of the project. Here we share some, uh, some uh, uh, photos with you. It's from a, a little bit from our uh, lessons that we had. It was amazing that Parents and the the parents and the um, teachers and a lot of people are calling us uh, and asking us when can we give them some information online. So the videos would have been a lot helpful if we want to teach a game online and not just tell them how to do it. Well, I told that it was going to be short and fast, and I kept my word. Thank you all for being part and being part of my life as well and our lives. And hope to see you all soon and healthy evening. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, thank you for, for your contribution uh, also in manual, but in, in the whole project and uh, oh, uh, all your- I need, I need one more minute. Yeah. I got to say, uh, I had a, a comment which is very important for us. We had a letter from uh, one of the board members that said that we need to uh, reconsider uh, the manual for the deaf kids, which is very important because we had a club with deaf children that they could not attend so easily with us and with uh, kids with Down syndrome and disabilities. So we will thinking how to find some financial support and to engage the manual with these uh, categories. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, this, these are already the, the results of the project. Uh, now that feedbacks are coming, and every time, as it is written actually in the manual, that uh, it's not done, it's not finished, that uh, out from the feedback, uh, we will create more things. And uh, uh, I think uh, Fabio mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is something that has to continue. Uh, thank you for your uh, ideas about sustainability. Now I would like to ask uh, Leonardo to play another video. Uh, Leonardo, please. Yes. Can you see the screen? Thank you very much, Leonardo, for this video. It's uh, another fantastic video that we can learn quite a lot out of it. Uh, and now uh, I have 
the possibility, and it's my honor to be part of this project, to present uh, my short presentation and my point of view about this subject. Uh, I wanted to, to speak today about uh, positive spirit to the game and uh, sport against violence. I will try now just to share my screen with you. I hope you see it, yeah? Okay, so at the position of the professor of college and sport in Belgrade, I have the opportunity to cooperate and to work with many sport people, working as a, doing as a student here, working as a managers and trainers. Uh, we are coming to situation that uh, we have to think about quite a lot not having violence in sport. But when we talk about sport, uh, Mr. Saiti Buyar has already explained the uh, definition of sport. What I would like to underline also the rules, customs, regulations. Everything when it comes to competition, it brings us a little bit more to tense. All we think is what about competition? How are we going to get through the competition? Uh, who is the opponent? Uh, the importance of the competition is coming to the front and which is not good. Uh, nowadays, very easily, the factories, they, they are creating and producing the medals. The medal you get for one game, for two games. Uh, we are losing the control of winning the medal. Uh, start interfering with the feelings. Everything is coming somehow very quickly. Now, all this produce, produce a little bit of violence, something that we don't need. The children early age are coming to this, as you see at the pictures. But let's go back uh, to the games. The, the recreation part that I teach my students, uh, it's the main part that has every sport. Games are very interesting and very important part of every sport. As long as we have the pleasure and fun in every sport, then we are reaching our goal. We are, all we have to do is search for the, a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, and creating this way sport, we are reaching the friendship, we are reaching the fun. And it is what is the most important, actually. Love, of course. Uh, I love to use the word recreation because this is how we try to get the attention of the children, how to create a positive atmosphere, how to connect people. All these different games that we are working on it, uh, bringing us to the point that sport should be fun. And now what we have in the future. We have a situation now that many sports clubs, many associations, many organizations, sports for all organizations, sports stakeholders, schools, etc., are trying to survive. What is the model of surviving? The model of surviving is creating a games in scope of the sport that they are doing. So let's say on the picture down left, you see that people are playing football, but very funny football. This is not the football by the regulation, but this is a football that creates fun, enjoyment. Uh, this is the football that creates good atmosphere. So three, through this kind of amazement and this kind of uh, animation through the, through the sport, we are connecting the children and we are bringing them back to the game. So we are bringing them back actually to the sports. So sports should relay on the game. These are the things actually that everyone is trying to create. This kind of joy that is present at the moment in the sports club is actually bringing new income, financial income, 
for all the clubs. And they understood that not only the 10 players, the best 10 players who will compete, will get all the income for the club. Then the other 110 children that are also the member of this club, they will also be part of their financial income. For this, we have to understand that the game has to be part of the sport, that we have to start from the beginning, that we have to uh, teach the children young age that uh, the most important thing is fun, uh, that we have to create friends. There's no fear that we have to be there, that we have to respect our opponents, not our enemies. These are the, our, main, the, our main messages. But this is all you can find in fantastic manual that our friends from seven countries, 10 organization has created uh, at, the, at the site that uh, my colleague Fabio has mentioned. This is how it looks like games. Every game is explained and you can see what is the game, the character of the game, number of the players, short description, but also what are the skills that you will develop. So basically, I want to come to a conclusion, but conclusion is um, relaying on the methodological guide of Novis and this project. When the competitive component is overvalued by adults and the ultimate goal of the sports practice corresponds to sports results, then children and young adults can miss experience, recreational and enjoyable component. On the contrary, young people should always be able to find space and time to have enjoyment in sports. Discovering and testing skills and roles different from those notable more athletic. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. And I hope that we will continue with our message and uh, especially with the uh, with the project that was that Novis has created where we I'm sure we will reach more and more public to respect it thank you and uh, now uh, when I think uh, I, I give a little bit a small introduction for my next uh, speaker. My next speaker is uh, Professor Francesca Vitali. Professor Vitali is a researcher and assistant professor at the University of Verona and consultant for the CGFS in Prato. Francesca will uh, speak about uh, presentation of novice methodological guide, aims and contents. Francesca, microphone is yours, please welcome. Hi Alex, thank you. I think that now we can yeah, show the video. Yeah, the video. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'll start the video now. Thank you. Is it visible? Yes, it is. Hello, everybody. It is a real pleasure for me to participate and contribute to this live webinar within the Novice Project with the aim to present you the Novice Methodological Guide. My name is Francesca Vitali. I am a sports psychologist working at the University of Verona, Italy. And since two years ago, I strongly collaborate with the Centro Giovanile of Formazione Sportiva in Prato, but also with the School of Sport of the Italian National Olympic Committee. My presentation today is focused on two parts. A first, a first one will be a very brief overview of the complex phenomenon of violence in sport. In particular, I will try to underline the importance of prevention. 
And the second most important part will be a presentation of the English version of the novice methodological guide, in particular focusing on aims, contents, and future direction. Concerning the first aim, we can start saying that sport is part of the society and it is not immune to the violence that pervades us. The book cover that you can find on the left side of these slides is just an example of the strong interest of sports science in this hot topic. Here you can find some different pictures representing different forms of violence in sport. In particular, the first two pictures were taken by independent journalists during the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. No joy, enjoyment or pleasure is represented here. But the most important point here is that violence in sport, both on and off the field, has come to be perceived and studied as a social problem. So defining the phenomenon is a very challenging action. Violence in sport has been defined as a form of aggression. This is one of the first definition of aggression, intended as an infliction of an aversive physical, verbal, or gestural behavior upon one person by another. But the most important part of this definition is intentionality. Aggression can be intended as violence only if this behavior com is committed inten with intention. And this definition includes a, a wide ranging of acts which can be conducted by athletes, but also coaches or supporter with the intention to physical or psychologically hit another person. So defining violence in sport is a, a very important um, starting point. Here you can find some other definition. Uh, is an arm inducing behavior, but also an illegal, hostile and intentional one. But no relationship between competition and violence in sport has been found. To understand the great interest, interest of the scientific community, let me show you some other papers. Here you can find the International Society of Sports Psychology position stand, the first paper on aggression and violence in sport. John Kerr wrote a rejoinder to it, underlining the lack of the moral dimension on this uh, uh, position stand. And that's why, five years later, he updated and revisited this position stand, also presenting the moral dimension and the moral aspect of this complex phenomenon. Here you can find another book written by John Kerr, we, who can be considered an important expert in this field, and another book presenting different aspects of this complex phenomenon. Another important question that can be addressed to violence in sport is the roots. Which are the roots of this phenomenon? Where, from where violence in sport originates? And many causes have been reported the first important are frustration when an athlete loses a match or underperform during a competition or is being arted or injured or when he perceives unfairness during the competition, violence can start. Another hypothesis deals with predisposition toward violent action actions, but this hypothesis does not receive so many support. On the contrary, the third one, understand violence in sport as a learned behavior. So coaches, parents, but also sport areas can act as a role model to teach uh, violence, for example, to other athletes or person. So this, in, this, this third uh, hypothesis is very useful also to prevent this complex phenomenon. Coming to the presentation of the English version 
of the novice methodological guide, we can start saying that the first and the main important aim of this guide is to define and present a suitable and useful methodology within the novice project, which can be easily understood and used by different stakeholders and educators, both of the field of sport and school context, to prevent and contrast the phenomenon of violence in sport. The contents of the uh, methodological guide deals with different parts. The first part presents different uh, phenomena of violence in sport and in school settings. The second one briefly presents a couple of models and good practice which have made as background for the novice project from Tifo Positivo to ELIS. The third part probably is the core part of the novice methodological guide. And within the novice project, a novice training method is presented. The fourth and last part present some tools such as logbooks, but also the sport chart, some cooperative games and videos which can be used. My intention is to present briefly each part with the aim to trigger your curiosity and to invite you to visit the website and to download the novice methodological guide, to read it and to use it and apply to the field. Starting from the, from, uh, the first part, we can try to represent some contents of the guide uh, dealing with some different form of violence. For example, the supporter violence is discussed also in terms of violence against athletes, but also referees, for example. Also, some sport organizations' violence forms are represented, such as, for example, the Nigerian Federation of Soccer, who has an homophobic position but also a problem dealing with gender, the gender prize money gap between male and female athletes. And again, the physician who was uh, convicted for more one of 130 sexual abuse on elite gymnast and Gabby Douglas, the Olympic champion, was one of these athletes. But again, also media and social violence. For example, if you Google on the web, girls and sports and boys and sports, you can find very different images, the first and the second. This is a cultural problem, of course, and it is absolutely a form of violence. Another example is the disrespectful language that journalists can use against, for example, female athletes in this case. And a very recent example is this one. Carly Lloyd is a, an American volleyball player. Uh, she was pregnant and so she terminated the contract with her club. And in, in, uh, in this case, the supporter on the web uh, use a very violent language against her. Another form of violence in sport is bullying, or for, for example, teasing, but also doping can be considered as a form of violence in sport. Parents and families are not immune at all. For example, for example uh, parents can argue on the stands while kids are playing, or again, they can give slaps to teammates uh, of their kids, or this is very impressive, they uh, can even dope uh, their kids to improve their performance. Another example is coaches' violence. This is an example of a coach who kick his hat list during practice, for example. But some uh, messages like go hard or go home, no pain, no gain, or more is always better, as a very strong, violent message inside. The second part of the met novice methodological guide deals with uh, models and good practice that served as a background for the novice project. 
just to make uh, to use a, a very few examples here you can find a training plan which was used in your tifo positivo project to um, to prevent violence and to make uh, for example teacher but also parents but also students aware of this problem and this second example is a letter addressed to parents to involve them also in the prevention of this uh, problem due within ALICE project. These two projects served as background for Novice project and within Novice project, the Novice training method is of course presented within the guide. I don't want to spoiler you all the contents, but let me make you some example. In the guide, you will, you will find some example of training methods that educators can follow within the school, but also the sport context to prevent violence. Here you can find some examples of topics, but also lectures that educators can uh, use to prevent violence in sport or to make aware uh, educators of the importance, for example, also of motivational process. Here you can find also uh, different levels of training and another didactic model um, which can be used, used to raise awareness on the importance of the motivational processes. In particular, the target model, for example, within the achievement goal theory uh, uh, framework uh, has been used because uh, several studies have been conducted and found that in a mastery task involving motivational climate, athletes have a more mature moral thinking and willingness to behave correctly. So, for example, this uh, um, deducting model is presented in the guide and proposed to be used to prevent this complex phenomenon. Uh, the, third, the fourth and last part of the, of the guide deals with tools such as, such as logbooks, but also sport chart, cooperative games and videos. Here you can find an examples of logbooks. Uh, refer to players in the sport field, but also to kids in the school. And here you can find some example of topics discussed by these logbooks. For example, inclusion, but also fairness and fair play, but also language, communication and emotion. And the interesting point is that not only definition is presented, but also some practical example to make kids or uh, youth athletes reflecting on the possibility to prevent this form of violence in sport. Another important tool is the sport chart. Uh, definition of inclusion, fun, but also integrity are presented. And this can be a very important document to use to prevent violence in sport. In particular, cooperative games can be used. For example, here you can find the violence role playing, which is a proposal for kids or, or, or athletes or students to reflect on the possibility to, uh, uh, to create a way to prevent and uh, solve violence situations. Another important tool is videos, the, which can be used to raise awareness of this important point. So my advice is to go on the web, to navigate and download the guide, read it and use it. Thank you for the attention. <laughs> Hi everybody, let me say hello to you also personally, not personally, not only virtual, it's a very pleasure being with you today 
And uh, my proposal is also to share with you my very last part of the presentation. I hope you can see my, my desk. Uh, I want to add some uh, reflection and final remarks or uh, uh, listening to you was a pleasure. For example, I think that really novice project as right sensibilization as make awareness higher on the problem of violence in sport and really can be considered as a useful tool to make a positive change on this hot phenomenon. Listening to the friend from Romania, I was considering that uh, this example is a full example of how novice can be applied. And also, okay, consider legislation way a very important way to prevent violence in sport is of course a priority, but in our project, in our framework, education is the major way we have to tackle the violence in sport. And of course, the importance of parents, uh, thanks also to Ricard's presentation, has been addressed. So involving families is a very important point to prevent violence in sport, also considering the psychological and motivational aspect. And I want to thank you also the colleague from Greek, because of course, uh, including disability attention, both in sports and in school, has to become a, a priority on that. And I think that we can also share some possible future directions. And why not some possible new future projects to implement the novice method because it's just a proposal but now we have to use this logbook we have to use this sport chart we have to adapt these cooperative games traditional and innovative to different contexts and countries across europe and why not also abroad and so not only implementation, but also expansion of the novice method, uh, changing something, giving us feedback, share experience, and to test also the novice method because nowadays is a proposal, but uh, this uh, methodology needs to be tested and studied. Uh, and we need to evaluate and measure also the real, uh, uh, capability and the real efficacy of this proposal, of course. Uh, where? But in, in different countries, not only Europe, European, but why not also extra European? In different contexts, uh, the majority of our presentation this morning dealt with, dealt with uh, school, uh, sport, but also school is a very important uh, context. So physical education is, of course, a very important setting because also sport is uh, proposed in school and uh, different types of sport. Um, OK, every everybody of us has uh, focused on youth sport, but also elite and non-elite can be another important uh, di 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 differentiation to have in mind. Uh, I, I really want to now open the discussion and uh, asking all the people who are also are with us feeling free to ask questions and contribute to this final meeting of Novis. Thank you, Professor Vitali. This was fantastic presentation. Uh, overall of uh, many years that you have done and very hard work. I have the guide in front of me and uh, uh, my personal uh, opinion will relay on uh, situation that uh, uh, novice methodological guide uh, hasn't been uh, still uh, written on Serbian language, but uh, as a representative of a college of sport and health, I will find out the way I will communicate with, uh, with, your, with the management of Novis to find out how we can translate it in Serbian, because uh, I think this is going to be the good reason to start uh, implementing uh, the whole guide or the parts in different subjects 
uh, that we teach our students. Now, concerning the fact that you have already mentioned before that this is uh, the time of implementation is coming, I would like to say that uh, the students who are becoming the teachers and the coaches in the future will have the main role of educating the young children, uh, the bigger ones, etc. So if we start from, yeah. from, uh, from our educational institution, I'm quite sure that we will at least uh, try to, to reach some point of view of the, of the project. And uh, if you agree with me, I think uh, uh, that uh, Magdalena has mentioned at the beginning uh, that something similar uh, happened with the project to neighboring country Moldova. And uh, Professor Saiti is here from North Macedonia. Now uh, we can conclude that the project is already becoming uh, bigger than you have started. So I think you should be very satisfied. I am. I now want really to thank also all the partners that contributed to the methodological guide because at the beginning you mentioned me and Salvatore Conte. Of course, I want to thank also Salvatore, but I want to, to share the acknowledgements to all the people we are here and also other are not, but are part of the team. So we have to consider the methodological guide as a first step to, to try to adapt and to change and to widen, to use in a, let's hope, eff efficacy way to, to tackle with this phenomenon, which is a, a, a priority. I don't know if you agree with me, but also the pandemic outbreak make the uh, problem of violent language and interpersonal acts also more urgent than before. So my impression is that uh, violence is nowadays a more and more priority phenomenon to, to prevent. So let's put energy on that and let's keep the Magdalena hope to, to, to stay in, in this network and to contribute again. So if you want and if uh, participants uh, wants to contribute and to ask, I think that we can be pleased to, to receive questions now. What do you think, Alec? Uh, yes, for sure, Leonardo. Uh, let's see what kind of questions do we have. Yeah, we're still waiting on some questions uh, to come in through the platform. So please uh, feel free to ask any questions on the platform, and I'll and uh, uh, and the speakers will uh, will do their best to answer. Uh, okay, while the speakers uh, 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 and uh, our public uh, give any kind of questions, I would like to ask Mr. Uh, Professor Saiti any possibilities, maybe that. Uh, we can also spread the, uh, the novice uh, guide and the project in general in North Macedonia. Uh, of course, uh, Alex, uh, every good always uh, stands very big in front of any door, especially what we are facing at the moment, I mean, every presentation at the end of the day said that starting parents, starting parents, uh, the goal is how to become rich. Uh, many parents, uh, they, they never, never uh, reach their goals on becoming rich through sports. So they force their own children to do something that they think they missed in the past. And this is a very huge problem. Uh, as a part of the, the, the Faculty of Pedagogy, we are facing a lot of uh, problems in schools, uh, like in the, not in the system, you know, they are kind of avoiding the system and doing things like maybe wrong, where they don't seem to have ears and eyes uh, of the problems that uh, they are happening at the moment. I have to refer to this as a uh, post-communist uh, country or socialist country or whatever it is, uh, in kind of 
bullings. You know, there's something new that came to our schools. We didn't know about these kind of things. There was rules, you know, rule of law was all the time here. And now with this like kind of democracy, the bullying is very, very, very uh, highlighted thing. And kind of we are now recognizing it. And we don't seem to find elements or tools how to prevent violence in sport because the more violent you are, they think that the more energy you have to score the result. And that's how you become famous. But it's not about being famous or having money. It's how to become a, a, a harmony in harmony or a part of everything. Don't, children are taught to be one in a million. And in fact, they have to be one of the million. They have to be a symbiosis between them, even in sports. Sports, yes, it is very good when it's competitive, but not with a definition of, uh, of competition, like to, 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 def uh, to defeat somebody, you know, to, to impone uh, superiority. Even schools, schools, uh, they create their sport teams to to become noticeable in the society, in their region. If their basketball team is the first in the country, this school, they have values. And that's why we have these pictures like they do with the gymnasts or athletes uh, like basketball, forcing, forcing students to be very well trained so they, they, they reach the finals of uh, whatever sports game it is. And they even fix their grades, like in the United States, they fix their grades on other exams so they can uh, give their time to the max on creating these physical abilities to, to, to gain the result. And us as a faculty of pedagogy, we all the time share this with the schools that we have to create children as more humanized as possible. Because when we go to that river of scoring for fame and scoring for money, we forget on being human. We destroy everything in front. Like there was an interview and they asked an Olympic candidate, like, would you use drugs to become first on this Olympic games? And she said, yes, that's my most important goal in my life. If I can do that and not get caught and win the Olympic gate, I would do that. And even if I die two hours later. So can you imagine what kind of a mind is that? I mean, I have to win this gold in the Olympics. And if I die after that, I don't care. I have reached my final goal, but there's always after that, what? And definitely novice is a, such a good platform. I have, I have uh, collaborated like, like with sports meet with open fun football schools. That's why I emphasize so much elementary games that are base of all these sports games, like games with a ball. It can be a football, it can be handball, it can be volleyball. Like Alex, you showed like it can be a football, but with like uh, six players and four goals, you know, or something like that. But if we teach children there, how to cooperate and have fun even in the competition even when they become like professional sports players the result will be still a top thing to win but they will have this human story inside of that and i will just finish with them this i saw a video on instagram and it was a uh, a running uh, competition a marathon where a guy was 50 meters in front of the second but on the turn on the left, he missed the road and he went straight. So the second one became first. And the guy understood that the first one just missed the road. He was, he was faster than him. He was going to win the, 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 the race. And then he stopped, waited for him to pass this 20 meters and let the second guy become the first because he understood inside of him there was a conscience that he was not going to win because of his abilities but because the other guy missed the road and these are the values that we have to put to children in young ages so even when they become a uh, professional high professional sportist they will compete okay. with themselves thank you thank you professor Buer. you have uh, reached uh, the overall point somehow uh, but we have some questions here Fabio, please, uh, you have the microphone. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander. Thank to all of uh, the speakers. But uh, in fact, we have several questions from uh, our audience. 
and uh, they are all mainly related to okay this seems interesting i want to try it i want to test it where do i find the methodological guide where do i find the resources what do i have to do let's explain it uh, in clear manner because we mentioned it in the beginning but now it is time to repeat what uh, you can get and how to get it well first of all how to get it in the website we've got the affiliation button in which uh, you are supposed to make a free registration of uh, uh, in this form a free registration of your organization to get well thank you very much this is the 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 page i'm mentioning uh, this is for free a very few information thanks to which you will allow to access to the full contents of novice uh, we are not showing the final version of what you are going to get uh, thanks to this affiliation because we are fine tuning the learn.noviceport.eu uh, platform. Uh, so we are uh, putting all the contents uh, we have uh, uh, said today, like the methodological guide presented by Francesca Vitale, the examples and the, all the other resources translated and created by our partnership in this final uh, tool. A couple of weeks, 15 days, and you'll get all the results, all the contents in this web page. Anyway, you can already re access to several uh, resources in the main uh, project uh, page uh, where there is the link uh, under project resources, that's it. But the overall uh, contents will be presented in the learn.novisport.eu platform. Uh, this is also related to what uh, our friend Tanya from Asteri Greece was uh, saying, because uh, we are also planning to uh, make uh, not only the full methodological uh, PDF, which is quite a huge one, but also to allow you to access to specific uh, parts of uh, each uh, uh, section of the methodological path so that you can just go on the specific part you are interested in and to get some support from uh, the partnership uh, which support novice in feedbacks, in uh, assistance in delivering your activities in your own uh, co um, context. So to answer to your uh, question, uh, you have to subscribe to the pilot affiliation uh, website and then you get access for free to all the resources. Of course, when I'm saying for free, I'm uh, referring to the fact that you are going to access to the written document, the audiovisual, the games and whatever. Um, unfortunately, but it, well, this is also a positive aspect as uh, uh, the other friends have said already, we have a lot of solicitations to make something concrete, something more, you know, to sustain uh, more and more with training the trainers activities. Well, we need more resources to do that. We will uh, collect uh, your feedbacks also to uh, count how many uh, other sport clubs or schools or whatever are interested and we will get uh, more support at local area or international level area as soon as possible. But of course, we want to go on. It is an engagement for all the partners, uh, a lot of external supporting uh, stakeholders who have already tested those activities here in Italy we have for instance the Italian Federation of Basket who tested and and acquired the competencies in the in the trainers and coaches activities so this is very important for us to get these feedbacks in order that we can go on we get more resources and you can deliver more activities for the novice methodological aspect okay uh, Fabio just let me uh, to give the final conclusion, and in case you have something else, I think the time is about to end. So I would like to thank all of you uh, for being part of this conference. This is a no, uh, final conference, but it doesn't mean, as Tanya said, that uh, the project is finishing. We are still waiting your feedbacks, and uh, we'll be very glad to expand our thoughts and uh, to see in which direction we can continue this fantastic project. Uh, if you have something else to add, please, uh, a couple of seconds, but uh, one more time. Thank you one more time for everybody to, for being part of this fantastic conference. All the best. Take care and stay well, please. Be careful.